Hi, everyone. My name is Baron Mystery, and I'm a principal engineer here at Ford Networks, except for today. Today, I'm a network engineer at Vandalay Industries. <laughs> All right. Now, before I begin, can anybody guess why I'm a little dressed up? It's not for networking field day, and it's not that I just like looking pretty, although I definitely, definitely do. The reason I'm dressed up is because I'm going to see my son play at a concert tonight at his school. And I really, really want to be there, and I really, really want to support him. But before I can leave the office, I have to resolve this ticket. Vandalay Industries has a business-critical customer portal that's going live tomorrow. However, as you can see by this ticket, there's a problem. All right, so what is this portal? Well, let's just check it out. To be honest with you, it's little more than an app server that's attached to a database server. Now, the bug report says that if a user refreshes this page a few times, and I'll just do that in just a minute, eventually we're going to get a database connection issue. All right, so let's see. Refresh, 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 refresh. Uh -oh. Refresh, refresh. Oh, sorry, I missed it. So there's my database connection issue. Does everybody see that? Now, the app teams tried to diagnose this a little bit. And essentially what they've come down to is they think that there's some type of intermittent connectivity issue between that application server and that database server. All right? Yep. Now, the rest of the bug gives me a little bit more context for why it was assigned to me. So in our entire network of thousands of devices that go, spans all across the, the globe, unfortunately, it just so happens that both the portal server and the database server are in parts of the network that I'm responsible for. Okay, so the portal server is in this Atlanta data center, and the database is in AWS. All right. Other than that, though, there's not a ton more actionable information in this bug for me to go on. All right. So just to summarize, we're dealing with sporadic connectivity issues over a path that spans multiple data centers. Remember, we're going from this Atlanta data center all the way to the cloud. It's affecting a customer critical system, and we're working on a tight deadline. Nope, this isn't my CEO's deadline. Remember, I've got to get to that concert. It's my kid's deadline that I want to get to. <laughs> All right, so I need some help. Help me. How would I debug a problem like this? How would you debug a problem like this? Trey Stroud, OK. I had a shill in the audience. He was planted, and he came up with a solution. <laughs> um, he suggested to use Trace Route, and this makes a ton of sense. Right? I can just log into the uh, portal server, issue a trace route to the database server, and see the path that packets are traveling along. Right? And so hopefully with that path, I'll notice something that's a little bit weird, uh, maybe a device that's not supposed to be there, or maybe I'll suddenly see that all packets are getting dropped after a certain point, something like that. Right? So hopefully this makes sense to people. So let's give that a shot. Right? So I'm logged into that device over here, and I'm just going to issue trace route to my database. All right, this is great. This is great. Oh, I'm already uh, having issues. There's some holes in my trace route here. There's some more holes. Um, all right, I could let this run. But just, just in the interest of time, I'm going to go back to PowerPoint. And here's a copy of that trace route. Now let's all look through this. So I'm going to look through this trace route, and I'm looking for sort of weird things, weird anomalies. I'm going to try to intuit what might be happening in the network. So does anybody see anything that's a little unusual or a little bit weird about this trace route? I see some heads nodding. I'll point some things out. All right, so let's just start. Number one, I have some multipathing in this network. All right, so we see at this fourth device hop. Um, some packets, are, I'm getting responses from SJC core PE02, but I'm also getting responses from SJC core PE01. And I see the same thing at this second hop. So I have some multipath in the network. Unfortunately, what that means to me is I may not just be debugging one path in the network. I may have to look across multiple paths in the network to actually find what the problem is with my, with my app server. All right, let's see, is there anything else that's a little bit weird? Yep. Uh, just at my very, very first hop, I'm already dropping packets. That's a little bit strange. All right, what else? Um, I know that it might be a little bit hard to see in the back there, but look at this, 75 milliseconds on my first hop link. All right, just to give you a little bit of context, I wouldn't, if I were sending a packet and it had a 75 millisecond RTT, I'd expect it to be going across the country and back. I definitely wouldn't expect this on my first link. All right, anything else? So this one was a little bit tough. I didn't expect you to get this. Let's go back to our bug report. 
remember that my customer portal is in its Atlanta data center. And yet, for some reason, my first hop is in SJC. That's super weird, right? My, I have a customer portal that's in Atlanta, and it's apparently directly connected to a, to a router or a switch or whatever else in San Jose. All right. So there's a lot of stuff later on in this trace route that I could dig into that seems a little bit strange, that seems a little bit weird. But for right now, let's just focus on that first hop. Let's try to figure out what's happening on that first hop, OK? So fortunately, periodically, Vandalay takes an inventory of their network, all the switches, the routers, the load balancers, the firewalls, and how they're connected in the network. All right? Now, it might be a little bit out of date, but hopefully it'll tell me exactly how traffic is flowing between uh, different elements of my network so I can debug this problem. All right? Now, let me just pull out my network inventory. I have it right here. Oh, it's on a napkin. <laughs> Ooh, might be out of date. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just leaf through. I'm leafing through, leafing through. All right, great. Page 752. I have the exact diagram that I need. I'm a little messy now. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So here on page 752, I have exactly the information that I need. I see that I have my Atlanta data center, which is connected to my San Jose data center across this MPLS core. And I also apparently have a VXLAN tunnel that's just going from somewhere in Atlanta to somewhere in San Jose. All right? Now, it's not, so this isn't too detailed on exactly what may be happening here, right? Um, I mean, where's AWS in all this figure? Similarly, I have no idea where my customer portal is. I mean, is it hanging off of one of those devices, or is it hanging off of something that's just not depicted in this network altogether? On the plus side, though, at least now I have some clarity on what might be happening at this first hop, right? So at this first hop, I was already dropping packets. At this first hop, I was going all the way from Atlanta to San Jose. So look at this architecture diagram. VXLAN tunnels between Atlanta and San Jose are effectively invisible for traceroute, right? Similarly, if there's any L2 domain that packets are going over, uh, that would also be invisible to traceroute, as would transparent firewalls. So this is sort of a good news, bad news situation. On the plus side, I maybe kind of sort of have a hypothesis for what might be happening at this first hop. Maybe I'm going through, an, maybe I'm going through that VXLAN tunnel. But on the bad side, I have absolutely no visibility into what might be dropping packets in that tunnel. All right? So forget about my kid's concert. Forget about tomorrow. Right now, I'm not even sure that I can get this app server reliable by the end of the week. All right, so what can we do? All right? Um, I have it, pretend I have another shill in the audience. They said monitoring systems. This is a terrific idea, <laughs> right? So the basic idea here is three years ago, we bought an integrated monitoring solution. Even better, just last month, we finished setting it up. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so maybe if my path is dropping packets or an interface on that path is flapping or something else is just weird, hopefully I'll have gotten an email from that monitoring system that's going to help me pinpoint exactly that interface, exactly that device that's causing problems. All right, so let's see. Go into my inbox. Now, again, this might be a little bit hard to see in the back. Hundreds of emails from this monitoring system, hundreds of emails. All right? And this should make sense. I have a network of thousands of devices. And in that network of thousands of devices, I guarantee you, every hour of every day, some link is behaving weirdly. Some interface is above a threshold, or some device is maybe flapping or also behaving weirdly. All right? And so I guess I could run through these hundreds of emails, clicking on each one to maybe find a device that seems like it might be involved in this problem. I guess I could do that. But I'm not sure that's a perfect use of my time. So let's take another approach. Um, so without forward, here's a summary of where I think my night might be going. Um, number one, I'm going to have to manually trace through multiple paths in my network. Number two, I'm going to have to do that over protocols for which my standard tools really don't work. Remember that VXLAN tunnel is going to be invisible for this trace route. Number three. I'm going to have to do this across boxes that I don't know exist, I may not know how to configure, and I may not even have credentials for. And number four, I'm going to have to do this quickly, or I might lose the love and affection of my child forever. 
Does everybody get this? Is everybody on board here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about how forward would solve this problem. All right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go directly into the forward platform. And I'm going to select my snapshot. And just to orient everybody again, this is my Atlanta data center down here. Over here is my San Jose data center. Here's that MPLS core that we saw in our architecture diagram. And here's AWS. OK? And so the question that I want to answer is where are packets going between the, my two services in this network? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type that question directly into forward. I'm going to type from my application IP address to my database server. And I'm just going to denoise a little bit. All right, great. And so instantly, Forward is telling me the path that all the packets between these two services are taking, what devices, what links, what interfaces they're taking. All right? And so let's actually just dive through that for a minute. So this is one of those paths over here. All right? So it seems like for my first top, packets are entering this NSX device, and they're L2 forwarded. Again, this would have been invisible on Traceroute. Then we're hitting that VXLAN tunnel, right? And I think there was a question in an earlier presentation about that tunnel. Does forward actually provide visibility into it? Well, let's click on view underlay really quickly. View underlay. We see the actual physical devices that are forwarding packets for this underlay for, between these two uh, services, all right? And again, we can click through those. We can see the exact interfaces the traffic is being sent on. We can actually trace the real routes. Does this make sense? All right, so let's just go back to our original path. So going back to our original path, we can actually keep clicking through. We can keep, keep clicking through. Um, other things that I just wanted to briefly highlight here, I think there was a question in the back, do you handle MPLS? Yes, we absolutely do. Here's an MPLS tunnel. Um, and we can see all the traffic going all the way to the database in the cloud. All right? So great. Let's go back to our slides. And so I just really want to pause here and be concrete about a comparison. In this one case, with my existing tools, I was left guessing as to where packets were going in my network. Right? There were a lot of holes. In the, and in contrast, with forward, I have complete visibility. It doesn't matter if I'm using MPLS tunnels or VXLAN tunnels. It doesn't matter if I have transparent firewalls or L2 domains. Forward is telling me the exact information that I need to use to solve, that I need to use to solve my problem. All right? So let's talk about that information. What does that visibility actually provide us? Well, with forward's path analysis, out of the entire universe of two data centers worth of interfaces, it highlighted maybe a couple dozen interfaces that are actually relevant for traffic between these two, between these two services. All right? And so, for instance, what I could do now is for each of those interfaces, I could look at my, a performance uh, monitor counting database. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit each of those interfaces to that database. And it's going to tell me, looks like it's been forwarding traffic. Doesn't look like it's been dropping too much traffic. It's healthy. Or alternately, hey, this interface has been flapping, or this interface has been dropping a bunch of traffic. Something is wrong with this interface. And if I get that red, then I know that this is probably the problem. This is probably the reason for my intermittent connectivity issues. All right? Now, of course, this is a great time to mention that Forward has an API. So we had a customer that was really excited about Forward's pathing tool. They said, hey, with your pathing analysis, you can reduce the number of interfaces that we have to look at orders of magnitude. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this one step further. We're also going to automate this process over here. We're going to take those couple dozen interfaces, and we're going to use it from your API, and we're going to compare against our performance monitor counting database ourselves. All right? And it looked something like this. Great. And so uh, essentially what I do here is um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter a five tuple. So the source address of my, uh, production, of my application data service, the destination address of my production database, and I'm just going to enter in the Postgres destination port, 5432. I'll hit submit. And what this tool is doing 
is it's number one, issuing a query out to Ford. It's submitting that five, pa that five tuple to Ford to tell me exactly which paths might be involved in forwarding this traffic. And then given that path information, that reduced path information, what it's doing is it's checking against our performance uh, counter database to see the temperature of those different interfaces that are actually forwarding traffic, okay? And so just looking a little bit more closely here, each of these boxes corresponds to a separate device, a separate device hub. On the left-hand side is an ingress interface, and on the right-hand side of each of these boxes is an egress interface. Now I have three rows. The first row, it gives me an indication of how many packets that interface is sending. The second row, how many it's receiving. And then the final row, how many packets it's dropping. Okay? And further, I can click on each of these interfaces to sort of get historical data of how that interface has been behaving. So what I'm going to do here with this, with this path is I'm sort of just going to scroll through these interfaces. And what I'm looking for, more than anything else, is probably a big red box in this third row for drops because that's going to indicate that there's probably some interface along my path that is dropping packets and causing these intermittent connectivity issues, all right? So let's just do that. I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna scroll. I still don't see anything else. Yep. USA Core P02, interface GE004. It's my eighth hop. It's in my VXLAN tunnel, and it seems to have been dropping a bunch of packets recently. This is probably the cause of my, network, my uh, connectivity issues, all right? So what can we do about that? Well, let's look now back at this path and forward. All right, so here's my path and forward. Again, this is from my application server to my database server. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to issue a uh, more extensive query. I'm going to go over to here to my filters tab. And this is going to list all the devices that are involved with forwarding my packet. And here's USA Core P02. And I have an option here. I can select bypass. And what bypass is going to do is it's going to say, show me all paths in the network that go from that application server to that database server that ignore USA Core P02. So these are all the healthy paths. These are also all the cases where maybe a user went to that page and they were able to visit it okay. All right, and so this is great. It suggests that I have some redundancy in my network. All right, so I'm just going to go back to my slides quickly. So what did we do? Well. Our integration with Ford's path analysis and a performance monitor countering da counting database showed me likely exactly where that problem was. On USA Core P02 interface GE004, that's where my problem was. And uh, using additional searches in my network, I believe that I have some redundancy in the network, so I have some slack to play with. So what can I do with this information? Well, I'm going to file a high priority ticket to the NOC to switch out that line card on GE004. And I'm going to tell them that that GE004 interface is affecting my customer portal. I have proof of that. And I'm also going to paste in my searches with forward network that show that there's some redundancy in the network. Hopefully, <laughs> this, this is going to give them some confidence to accelerate fixing the, to switching out that line card on a live system. Um, and hopefully, they'll actually fix the problem for my customer portal. All right? So about 10 minutes later, they get back to me. And based on the importance of the customer portal, they change out the line card right now. Zooming ahead a bit, it's 15 minutes later, and the line card has been switched out. On my integration, I can see, on my integration, I can see that everything is uh, healthy. No big red boxes over there. And I can go back to my service portal. and hit refresh a bunch of times, and everything is still healthy, all right? So I want to be very, very careful here <laughs> about what Forward Networks actually did. I don't want to overclaim. In this demo, did Forward end world hunger? No, it did not. Did we full, fully automate resolution? No. Forward provided me additional visibility so that I could file that ticket to the NOC, telling them exactly the interface that I needed to switch out. Similarly, in this demo, did Forward change company culture so that we weren't debugging a critical system the night before it was supposed to go live? No, it didn't do any of that. And maybe you didn't find this demo relevant because of those things. Or maybe you didn't find it relevant because you're some type of cyborg. It's just memorized the underlay overlay mappings in your network or uh, had the same issue last year and knew exactly what was happening. But tonight, Forward did help me solve a problem. 
Using Ford's path analysis, I found exactly the information I needed when I needed it. Using Ford's flexible API, I combined that information with other tools to pinpoint the problem. And then using Ford Search, I got confidence to see the redundancy in my network to suggest that maybe it would be OK to switch out this line card outside of a real change window. All right? But I'm a big picture guy. I don't want to get bogged down in the details. Really what I cared about is Ford gave me the information that I needed to solve problems faster. And because I solved those problems faster, I was able to do things that were important to me, like see my kid play in his concert. All right? Thanks, everyone. Um, this has been an eventful, uh, <laughs> an eventful Wednesday. I want to now hand things over to Fabrizio, who has an app migration that I think you all are really going to pay attention to and love. I, I have one question. Yeah, uh, please. Before we change, is, uh, I just don't know, do you have an example of what, uh, what it looks like when you don't have a picture of the underlay? In this case, it looks like we're touching all of the components that make up the underlay. Let's say like a DMVPN over commercial internet. I don't get to touch and see the data points from commercial internet. I only get to see my overlay. Just what does that look like in a, in a map? Yeah, so I'm an not, example of that? I'm not absolutely great about protocols. If I could hand it off to Seaver or Nikhil to answer, answer that. Yeah, we are basically restricted by what information we can get access to. Sure. So we can definitely show the end-to-end -end path going over an overlay. But if we don't collect from the underlay elements, we'll not be able to do that mapping from overlay to underlay. Uh, but in, in networks where we can actually collect from the underlay, we can do the mapping. Right, OK. 